I think that relations with the ECB uh, were strained when I first joined, and I think that that's right, because I think when the PCA was relatively young, it was having to battle very hard um, to gain attraction uh, and to get, uh, get taken seriously by the ECB. But one of the things I was able to do, coming in a little bit as an outsider, was to try and identify those areas of common ground uh, and over time work uh, constructively with the ECB on things that mattered to them uh, and, uh, and build up over time a relationship that, uh, that persuaded them that we were an organisation that, that actually was, uh, it was better to fund us and work with us uh, than it was for us always to be battling. Um, corruption in cricket was probably uh, the single most difficult thing that we had to deal with. Uh, very early after I joined, uh, we had the, the, the case with uh, Mervyn Westfield, uh, and then that summer, um, the Pakistan corruption case. So in our first few months, we were dealing with what were some quite challenging issues. And I'm, I'm lucky that when I joined, um, Jason Ratcliffe and Ian Smith were already ahead of the game in terms of uh, having commenced uh, education. And I think that uh, we've had world-leading programmes in, in education in a number of areas, but corruption was one of them. Uh, and, and, and Jason in particular uh, had done a, a, a fantastic job of making sure that we were realistic about uh, what we needed to do to ensure that players understood their obligations and, and delivered against them. And this was an area where it was in the ECB's interests to get us on board, uh, because uh, in, in, in the fight against corruption, it's clear that players, administrators, everybody um, has the same agenda and, and, and has the same needs for the game to be, uh, to be seen to be clear of corruption. We've done as much as any uh, sporting body has done um, to make sure that the game is, uh, is safe. Uh, and we've also done it in a way that has helped to develop the reputation of players and the association. We've created addictive behaviour programmes, which were the forerunner to the mental health campaign and programme, Mind Matters initiatives, to, to educate and raise awareness about a number of social issues. We've created a, a world-class personal development and welfare programme, where people um, are out working with cricketers, past and present, to A, help minimise distractions as cricketers, but also make sure they're prepared for life after cricket. So in all, between the personal development programme and the Mind Matters and the Addictive programmes, what we're trying to do is make sure that the welfare of cricketers is first and foremost. I'm a big believer in education and the fact that we've now got six fully trained PDMs, you know, one assigned to, to three counties, making sure that players are aware of what they can do, what's out there, the opportunities, um, I think is absolutely invaluable and just to be given a head start in that direction so guys have got an idea of what life can be like after cricket um, and what they should be doing I think it's really really important There's, the Benevolent Fund has been fantastic as well we've seen on, uh, on videos like this one the kind of the good work that gets done the people that fall on fall upon hard times whether it's disability whether it's mental health whether it's addiction um, there's so much good work that the, the PCA does, that the Benevolent Fund does, and um, you know, 50 years is testament when you think of uh, you know what it was like before that, what guys were being paid, um, what support there was for them. That generation never had that, and we've got them to thank for uh, for things being in place now. We were very fortunate that Marcus Triscothic led the way um, in being very open, uh, first in his book and then subsequently in, in work with the uh, PCA uh, on the issues he'd faced. Um, and we got to the point uh, quite quickly where players were prepared to talk about their experiences and, and players listened to players. I think Marcus Triscothic was a catalyst in many ways for um, decreasing a stigma of mental health, not just in cricket, but across the whole of the population. So I think where we are today with a number of mental health ambassadors and a programme that we've got today which is seen to be leading the field in sport and the general population is largely down to Marcus Triscothic and our other high profile ambassadors. Now all of that was channeled together and harnessed by, into a fantastic programme called Mind Matters by Jason Ratcliffe. And, and Jason really has been the person who has led all of that work uh, and uh, uh, again, I think that the work that's been done on mental health um, is world leading. Um, it's had an impact in cricket. Uh, it's had an impact beyond that into other sports who've seen what can be done. Uh, but, uh, but I think it's had an impact uh, more broadly than that. 
Uh, we've we've had other mental health we've had mental health charities talking to us about the benefits of sportsmen uh, speaking out because it's encouraged others to seek help, uh, and that's that's really one of the key things in, in any issue relating to mental health. The confidential helpline was really important with this. It was a key building block because it gave people the outlet to be able to speak to someone in confidence away from a dressing room. And that's grown to the situation and the state that we have today where we're having tens of thousands of pounds spent on the confidential helpline support network in general. When I joined the PCA, the personal development and welfare program was run by the ECB uh, with the support of the PCA. Uh, and during the last uh, during the last six years, we've transferred uh, the PD, uh, PDMs, the personal development managers, across to become employed by the PCA. I think that's been a thoroughly good thing uh, because it's really asserted their independence uh, from management, uh, if you like, uh, and it's given players the confidence that they can talk to their PDMs and work with them. It's also allowed us to invest more into that program and that's something that we've regarded as an absolute priority. And having invested more in the program, we've been able to help more players to prepare themselves better uh, and indeed to help players in transition. Uh, and we know from the research that we've done um, that the first two years after players finish playing uh, is really when uh, they have the greatest challenge. Uh, and so it's important not only that we support players whilst they're professional, but in the immediate aftermath of their career. We also created a play on the life of Colin Milburn, the fantastic career he had, but how his life petered out in a sad way. And the story is really about mental health. It's about preparation for life after cricket to make sure that when people do finish, they have something to go to and that cricket isn't the only thing in their life. The organisation has become much more professional. Clearly, there's a huge infrastructure involved um, right from the top now with, with David um, and, and everybody. You know, there's a, there's a huge team of people involved now. And if you go back to the early days uh, when when I joined, it was it was David Graveney, it was Harold Goldblatt and, and Matthew Fleming and, you know, a very small team of people around about that. Nowadays, it's, it's a huge commercial organisation and it does an incredibly, incredibly important job for every single player that goes out, and, out there and represent their counties. We're trying to educate players to negotiate for themselves. We don't act as an agent um, and therefore we don't charge the player. Um, we're, we're creating a, a really important, or we're fulfilling a really important role on behalf of, of members. And I come back to representation. We're representing players as best we can and hopefully protecting them and moving them forward in a positive way, not just on the pitch, but also off the pitch. To be honest, now I sit on the other side of the fence, um, you just understand how good a job the PCA do. Uh, sometimes they can be a bit of a pain when they are, um, they are the negotiator for the player. Um, and it is fair to say that every player out there gets a very, very uh, strong support, a uh, strong amount of support from the PCA when they act as their agent. Um, so sometimes we have some pretty, uh, pretty difficult conversations, but you know that ultimately what they're doing is representing the players as fairly and uh, as they possibly can do. Um, I've always thought the PCA was there to be there for the player, every single player. It's not just one player, it's everybody benefits from the, the, the association. And actually now that I am on the other side of the fence, you can see that, see how much that resonates as being true. Of course, fundamentally what the PCA is about is delivering services to our members. And through Jason and his team, we do a huge amount of that. And, and he and his team should be congratulated on that. We do great work. And of course, anyone involved in the organisation, that's the thing that makes you proudest.